So we're on to our final set of videos for the semester. And this one's the final big topic for our unit 10, the AP unit eight. All right, and it's all about volumes. All right, so we're gonna look at volumes in three different ways. So the first way we're gonna look at as cross sections. All right, so what's the volume of a cylinder? All right, a cylinder looks like this. We have kind of a circle on the end. It's got some length to it. We have another circle on the other end. All right, and the volume of this is you take the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. All right, that gives me kind of this area here. And then I'm just doing that same circle all the way to the right. So I just multiply that by the height or the width or whatever of the cylinder. So I just find the kind of the end area and then multiply it by the height. And what about the area of a triangular prism? I have a triangle It goes to the right. I have another triangle at the end. At right, this one, I would find the area of this triangle on the end. It's gonna be one half base times height. And then I just multiply that. It's the same triangle over and over again. So I just multiply that by the length of the prism. And this is the basic idea I want you to get of when the cross sections are the same, you basically take the area of that cross section and then multiply it by how many we're going to the right. Right, so that's basically what this says. Right, you take the area of that cross section and then multiply it by the height or the width or whatever you want to call it. All right, so this is actually going to apply to integrals as well. If we have some shape that all has the same cross sections, we use that basic uh, or area formula for that cross section, and we just multiply it by the length, which is going to end up being an integral. All right, so let's look at an example. So there's a solid, and if we have its base, it's a region bounded by the square root of four minus x squared. So if you were to graph that, you would get this kind of semicircle. All right, that's the base of the solid. So let's see if I can actually try to draw this. This is not gonna go well. Right, but for each individual part, I'm gonna have this square that comes up. So every single one is gonna be a square that uses that semicircle as the base and it would kind of connect like that. Kind of looks like a bridge if you were to kind of flip it on its side it's kind of arced on the top flat on the bottom right, the basic idea is how am i going to figure out this thing so the basic idea is a everything is a cross section is a square and the area of a square is the side squared all right so that's that cross section just like we were doing with the cylinder and the prism that's the cross section and what's the height or the length the length is the integral because we're working at the entire region. So our integral is going to start at where this thing starts, which happens to be at negative two. It's going to end where this thing ends at two. And those kind of shapes that we're adding up, those cross sections that we're adding up are the side length, which we said is the square root of four minus x squared squared. All right, so that's the whole problem. All right, these problems seem really difficult because you have this weird base and this weird uh, kind of cross section situation, but if you think about what is the area of the cross section, it's the side squared. So I take what the side is and square it, and I just add it up over the amount of space I'm covering, which from negative two to two. All right, so this one would be negative two to two. The square root cancels, and you could take the antiderivatives and plug in again, just to save time for the video. Let's just plug it into a calculator. I can actually type, it might help. All right, and when you do all that, if you were to do antiderivatives and things or plug in the calculator, you get 32 over three. All right, so that would be the volume of that solid. All right, this is a new problem, but it looks really similar to the old problem. There's only really one word that's changed. And the only word that changed is semicircle. All right, so now I'm gonna have that same region. I have each one of these regions Oops, let's draw it the correct way. Each one of these regions, I'm gonna have a semicircle cross section. And I can't even really picture this one in my head, but it's kind of a semicircle at the bottom, and each one of those is a semicircle going up. Maybe I could try to create something that looks similar to this, but uh, the basic idea is what is the area of a semicircle? The area of a full circle is pi r squared. So a semicircle is half of that, so it's divided by two. All right, so that's the area, and I need to add up all these semicircles together. So I'm going to take the integral, 
Again, it starts at negative 2 and ends at 2. And my formula is going to be pi times, again, r is, we're using, uh, this is our base. Our actual radius is only half of that, so it's going to be 1 half 4 minus x squared squared over 2. Okay. And if you haven't to do this by hand, you would do some simplifying. Um, pi times 1 fourth times 4 minus x squared over 2. And that 1 fourth go to the bottom, so it would be pi over 8 times 4 minus x squared dx. All right, but all in all, you basically use whatever the formula is for the area of that uh, cross-section part, and then you basically do the integral of that. So this is going to be integral from negative 2 to 2 of pi divided by 8 of 4 minus x squared dx. And if you do that, you get 4.189. All right, so these cross-section ones, think about what is the area of a single cross-section? In this case, the area of a single semicircle is this. And then our radius, in this case, our radius was half of the height of this thing, so it's half of the equation we're given. And then you're just going to add up all those ones. So again, remember, adding up a bunch of stuff is an integral. All right, so you're taking the integral of all these cross-section areas. All right, here's another one. All right, the base of a solid in the region, the first quadrant, bounded by this and that. Each cross-section perpendicular to the y-axis is a rectangle whose height is five times its width. All right, what is the volume of the solid? All right, so real quick, let's just try to get a picture so we can visualize. So we have y equals 2 minus 2 thirds x, right, which is this kind of slanted line going this way. All right, so this is our region. That's our base. And then for every single cross section, we're going to have this rectangle that's a lot taller than it is wide. All right, so what's the area of every rectangle? The area of every rectangle is going to be the base times the height. But we know the, the, the height is five times the base. Right. So that's going to be the area of all of these rectangles. Right. So what is our final answer going to be? Our answer is going to be uh, our region starts at 0, and it ends at 3. And then for every single uh, rectangle we have, the area is 5 times 2 minus 2 thirds x squared, right? So this is 5b squared. This is the base, so I square it. And it just wants the round, so it's actually is telling me to put it into a calculator. All right. Let's see, 5 times 2 minus 2 thirds x squared dx. And I get 20. Right, so my answer is 20. Again, the big thing for this one is just creating your uh, integral. So the integral starts where your region starts, ends where your region ends, and then you're integrating over all of these cross sections. So every cross section is the base times 5 times the base, which is 5 times that, and gives us that formula. Right, so here's one for you to try on your own. You have this region. And each cross section is a square. All right, so what's the volume of the solid? So make your integral first and then just put it into a calculator. And the answer you get is one. All right, so let's look at what our region looks like. All right, so one minus x cubed, or sorry, one minus x over three is this region. All right, it starts at zero. You'd actually have to figure this out when uh, y is zero, x has to be three. So it starts at zero and ends at three. And each cross section is a square whose area is the side squared. So our side length is one minus x cubed and we square it. All right, put that in the calculator and you get one. All right, you can also multiply everything out, take antiderivatives, all right, but again, for this one, we're more worried about this step than the actual final answer.